Hey guys, John here. Today's patch in GMS is called The Void, and this is a pad. I felt like I should make a pad in GMS for this week, so here we go. It is about 27 bars long, so bear with me because pads should be slow and opening and closing and, you know, ethereal and that whole kind of thing. So with that being said, this is The Void. Alright, that was the void. If you like the patch, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. So let's dive into this thing. So basically with pads, one of the main characteristics that we should all know is a long attack and a long release. So that is why this attack is all the way at 1 and this release is pretty close to 1 at 0.86. So let's start off and look at this patch here. So I have this string right over here and this is minus 24, so down 2 octaves over here. The second oscillator is going to be vocal, and that's going to be up 36, so th what, three octaves up, and that is going to be at points 23 in the mix, so it's kind of just kind of sneaking in this really, really high-pitched vocal waveform. And then for oscillator number three, it's going to be the same vocal waveform, but this one's going to be default, so this is going to be kind of setting the main bass over here, and the mix is 0.44 for that one as well. Also, for this pad, it's kind of nice to have a little bit of noise in there, and that noise is at point 23. You can kind of hear it more once the filter opens up. It's like, shh, you know, kind of just gives it a little bit of that airiness to it. All right, so moving on from there, we have our voices at 16. This is going to be a max one, and our stereo all the way full at once, full on spread out, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Detune, 0.37, and for the octave, it's going to be up two octaves right over there. Look at us talking about spreading pads. That's, that's so good. Okay, so now for the cutoff, we have 0.73 on a low pass with no resonance because like I've said before, I don't really find the resonance very good in GMS's low pass. So I don't, I don't really use that very often. It just kind of removes a lot of sound, I think. It, it's not really representative of a good resonance knob personally. I love the synth, but I don't really like the resonance. So moving on from that, we have this envelope. So what is this envelope doing? So as we see here for this destination, this envelope is going to be controlling the filter. Now this amount is going to be at 0.57. The attack is all the way at the top at 1, so it's pretty slow. And the decay is at almost at the middle at 0.48. So what's happening here is let's listen to our note, right? And if we look at our spectrum view over here, we can see that it starts low and then more highs kind of start coming in. That slope right there. So what's happening over there is basically controlled by this envelope. So what it's doing is it has this base value of where the cutoff is, and this envelope is slowly opening up that filter to kind of give a little bit of motion. Because remember, with pads, it's always change over time in addition to slow attack and slow release. With those two main concepts, you can really make a good pad out of almost any waveform within reason, okay, within reason. So that's basically what this envelope here is doing. Number two is left alone, this amount knobs all the way down. So yeah, that's pretty much what's happening there. Now for the LFO, so we're just using one here. Now this one's interesting because this is going to be controlling the frequency, so the main pitch of our sound with a triangle wave. Now, this is going to be at 1 over 1, but it's not going to be synced to anything, so it's just on none. And this value is very low at 0 0.10, and it kind of just gives a little bit of differences of pitch as it kind of plays through. So let's exaggerate this and see how it ruins the sound. <laughs> 
So that's the effect that we're applying, but just a little taste, a little razzle dazzle at 0.10. So it's kind of giving a slow vibrato kind of thing. So that's it's kind of nice to add a little bit of touch to that. Definitely don't go overboard unless you want to do some weird sci-fi, weird, wacky stuff, then go for it. So on our main envelope over here, so like I said before, with Pat's, a long attack, and I feel like it would have been nice to go longer for this attack, but this is the max that GM GMS allows. So one all the way to the right. And our decay is at one. Sustain is a little bit down at 0.44 because we want our sound, once we hit our notes, the attack is going to be slow and it's going to reach this peak and then it's going to start decaying that sound and it's going to rest at a lower volume, 0.44 to be exact, and kind of hover around there to kind of give a little bit of, of uh, dynamics there. So it opens up, reaches its max value, and then it slides down and sustains at kind of a comfortable volume. And then once we let our keys go for the release, it's going to be a 0.86, not all the way because that's a little bit too much. You can kind of add a little bit of verb to that, reverb to that, and it kind of fits in the whole little thing there. For our output, zero change here. Didn't feel like that was need to be changed. No pan, pitch, or frequency slide for this patch. And there's only going to be two effects here that we're going to have glued. One is going to be the phaser, and this one's kind of interesting because you kind of just have to like hold down your notes and kind of play around and see, okay, that sounds pretty much nice and kind of end up there. So with that being said, we landed on a depth of 0.77 and a feedback value of 0.43. And for this here, we're going to be modulating a little, little bit. So at 0.50, it's default, so it's not doing anything. This is going to be 0.71, so we're doing a little bit of modulation at a very slow amount of 8 over 1 on beat. So this is 0 0.71, so let's kind of exaggerate and see what this is doing. So that effect there, we kind of like it, and we can kind of see this going on our spectrum view as well. These, wa these waves right here, we literally see that phaser, and that's that sign, which is this selected sign right over here. But we don't want that much of it, so that's why like 0.71 is kind of a good medium, because we can still get a little bit of that effect without having this patch to be like, oh, that's just a patch with a heavy phaser on it. We can kind of see a little bit of that phaser working, so just a little bit goes a long way for that one as well. Now for our echo, which should be delay, this amount knob is at 0 0.50, so we're really, really just using this as a delay. Now the feedback is going to be uh, 0.59, and then the filter about 0.5, so pretty much in the middle, the feedback's a little bit to the right there. And uh, three fours, three over four over here, the shape uh, doesn't really matter because we're not really doing any modulation there. So with that being said, that's basically what's happening in GMS. Now, for our uh, channel strip here, we have a fruity parametric EQ2. Now, what's happening here is cutting off a lot of these lows, like that's too low at around, uh, what is that? I can't even read that, 700 something, 75. Good Lord, yeah, 76, 75, around there. Because um, you don't really want that low end rumbling just to kind of muddy up your sound. Also, this 200, you know, 200, 300, 400, that kind of range, that's where Satan lives generally. So you kind of want to bring that down a little bit. Not too much because you're going to lose. You want a little bit of Satan in your life, but not that much because it can ruin your sound with muddiness. And then at the top here at about 5.3K, just a little bit of the air kind of punch, pushing that up just a little bit to get uh, a little bit of clarity once that filter opens up. Imagine a sound stretch as large as the universe. Leave a comment if you know what that's from. Anyway, this uh, GMS here is going to be going to the reverb here, which is my typical Valhalla reverb. And yeah, I think you should know that by now. And not not too much, just a little bit to kind of give it a little bit of uh, more openness. Because you always kind of want to add some reverb to a pad to make it a little bit larger than life. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great song right there. A little throwback to back in the day. Anyway, so that is GMS, uh, what do I call it? The Void, the Void, the Void Pad. So yeah, let's play this out with the Void Pad. And as always, if you want to get this patch for free and you don't want to dial this up by yourself, you can always do so through the link in the video description below. But like I've always said before, these patches from now on are gonna be saved through the Fruity Wrapper. I save them through here, as opposed to saving them through this interface here, because it's nice to have your presets 
in a folder right over here to the top, kind of just similar how a lot of other plugins work as far as like Citrus or Harmer or Harmless or something like that. So I kind of like that workflow a little bit better and you can organize them into nice little folders. That's an easy click away over here and you don't have to open up this big menu. So with that being said, this is The Void and thank you for watching. That reverb tail gets me every time. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.